Okay, as you probably know, we use a lot of Koenig wheels on our project cars. Um, they're flow formed, they're relatively uh, reasonably priced, um, they hold up on track, and they look good. So today we kind of want to dive into what exactly flow forming is, where it fits in in the market between cast and forge and the other wheel construction techniques. And to help explain that, we brought in Scott Weiss from Koenig Wheels. Uh, you're like the vice president or something, right? You're pretty high up there. Yeah, something. Uh, something like that. <laughs> so, Scott, um, I, I guess the, the best way to start off, you know, kind of explain the difference between a cast and a forged wheel, if you will. Sure. So, you know, really what's interesting is when we start talking about, you know, cast and, and flow formed and forged, um, you know, there are, there are going to be pros and cons of each. And, and that's the one thing I think that's really important for people to understand, that there is no one wheel that's better than other. And the reason is because you're always going to be in a situation where everybody's personal use and their functionality needs are going to be different. And when they're different, that, that priority of where that product um, offering lies is going to change. You know, when it comes down to cast wheel, uh, we all know kind of what we think cast is. I mean, obviously there's different types of casting, but, uh, but essentially a cast wheel is going to be where you uh, bring in a molten material into a mold uh, where it's cooled and then ejected out of a mold. Um, and that's essentially essentially casting. So everybody kind of knows what forging is. Uh, you start out with a forging. It means it's been usually pressed with wheels. It's usually pressed to about 10,000 tons. And then what you do, you take that uh, forging out and essentially the wheel design is then CNC'd uh, from that forging. Now, obviously when it comes down to forging, because the tensile strength has increased so much that you're able to take away excess material uh, to the point where you kind of meet that given load rating or the standards that you're trying to build to. So, you know, with forging, that's how you typically end up at a product that's pretty light uh, and the strength is still there. I mean, I'm hearing you talk about forging and I'm hearing, you know, zillion ton press that's probably the size of a school bus. I'm hearing subtractive manufacturing, which is always expensive. So I'm starting to understand why forged wheels are not really attainable for the average person probably. You know, when you start talking about forging, there's definitely some things that need to be kept in mind. And the reason is because when you talk about forging, you, yeah, the 10,000 ton press, all that good stuff, but just start with mm -hmm. a forging and essentially a forged profile, and you're gonna essentially uh, CNC or machine your design out um, of that material. When you start CNCing, you know that anybody, including, you know, possibly, uh, you know, a toddler, if they have some programming skills, can develop something that a machine right. can follow and CNC. So you really have to have a company that you trust that's going to be able to CNC a wheel out that's going to hold up to the strength of the vehicle that you're using, uh, meets load rating. When we do our live streams, we constantly get questions about other wheel manufacturers. Now, we can't give, uh, you know, give some of that information uh, on things that we may not have exposure to. But, you know, as car people, mm -hmm. we may have some exposure. And there's a lot of great companies out there producing great product. Cool. So we, we've talked about casting, we've talked about forging. It sounds like you're using that expertise and those skills to kind of use an innovative new technique that makes a, str a lighter, stronger wheel without that giant press, basically. Is that, is that flow forming? So now we've, we, now we've gravitated right into the middle, right? The sweet right. spot. Now, I will say this. There are a lot of other companies now that are starting to do flow forming. We've been doing flow forming, uh, you know, in production since 2009. Oh, wow. So we definitely have over a decade of flow forming uh, experience. But essentially what happens with flow forming is, you know, you take the wheel out and let's say you're going to try to make an 18 by 10 and a half or an 18 by 11. That wheel may come out of the mold at an 18 by eight or an 18 seven and a half. And what's going to end up happening is the wheel is then taken over to this flow forming machine. And essentially flow forming essentially means that you're going to be extruding out the barrel um, and, you know, squeezing it down to the point where you're adding tensile strength. You're starting to describe something that sounds a lot like forging there. There's a lot of terms on the market for what flow form wheels actually are. Um, when you start spinning a barrel under pressure, you're, co you're compressing the molecular structure of the aluminum. You're tightening up that grain structure. And when you do that, you are starting to put in those similar properties that are found into a forged wheel. We've got our LS Swap 350Z project car here, and I love the Koenig decagrams we've been running for a few years. 
how does flow forming make this car faster, help us save weight, help us get a better wheel for the track? Yeah, so flow forming really offers some incredible properties. One, uh, it's a, a far cry from, uh, you know, indifference as far as price point from a forged wheel. So, so that's the benefit to the average racer that may need to have six, eight, 10, 12 wheels, you know, when they hit the track, right? Um, that's number one. The second thing is that when it comes down to flow forming, we're putting strength into that barrel. So we're increasing the tensile strength. We're producing a wheel that's, that about, on average, is about 30% stronger than a traditional cast wheel. And obviously the strength thing allows us to remove excess weight because we're taking out material that's not necessary. Um, and still keeping that wheel at the right load rating and the right requirements that we need when we produce a wheel. I should be hitting 30% more curbing every lap, right? <laughs> well, Basically well what you're telling me. listen, I, you know, I think that there's, you know, we all know as people that, you know, have, have gone on the racetrack and have, you, you know, been curb checked and, and, you know, really hit those apexes hard. We all know that when we start talking about things like that, it is a brutal snap the wheel out of your hand type of, type of event that sometimes occurs. You know, as far as strength goes, I think you're gonna find a lot of benefit with the flow form wheels. I mean, you get a lot of strength out of them. And if, you know, you get to that point where you realize that, you know, you've, you've damaged the wheel or you start to see some fatigue, um, then it's time to retire that wheel and replace that wheel. And the point that I really wanna stress is, wheels are a wear item. A real, real key thing to say here is that wheels are a wear item and not just because you run them into curbs and other cars. Like wheels, metal metal can't flex indefinitely. Yeah, metal fatigues. It, and it doesn't matter if it's forged and it doesn't matter if it's full form and it doesn't matter if it's cast. If you're a racer and you're using your stuff, you need to routinely inspect your wheels regardless of what manufacturing uh, process was used to make them. It's really important. Um, I really can't stress that enough. It's a safety thing. So um, one other thing I wanted to talk about was load ratings. Like uh, our 350Z project, it's a 3,000 pound car with 400 horsepower on slicks. That puts a lot more stress on a wheel than say a Miata or something. And that's why these wheels have like a 1,500 pound load rating. Do you want to talk a little bit about how you can compare load ratings, what you need to know, what they actually mean? Yeah, Tom, you know what? Actually, this is a really great point. I'm actually really excited that you brought it up because I think that kind of the PSA that we just did in the last segment where we talked about wheels being a wear item, this applies. See, load rating is probably the one static piece of information that you can actually use visually to decide about strength of a wheel. Now, it's not ironclad, right? right. Load rating is not the end-all be-all as far as seeing if one wheel is stronger than another. You know, load rating essentially is what we build to for, for that corner. And one thing people have to understand is that if you're comparing wheel weights, you sure need to consider uh, the load rating on each wheel that you're comparing. And that's because, you know, let's say you find a wheel that's a pound difference and you're like, that's great. But then you find out that the load rating on this wheel is 1,380 pounds, but the load rating on this is 1,543. That's a big difference. And you're really gonna have to think about like, all right, is the extra pound gonna be worth the strength? Do I need the strength? Now, again, like you use the Miata as a good example, that car probably needs, you know, a few hundred kg. So, you know, we may build a wheel to, you know, 550 kg, uh, you know, about 1,212 pounds. That is, uh, you know, probably way over sufficient for that car. But if you were to translate that onto, like you said, like to your Z, that's just not enough. Understand that really in essence, while forged wheels would obviously have more tensile strength and benefits the same way a flow form wheel would have benefits with the elongation and different things. Understand that when you're comparing a wheel, if one is 690 uh, kg, which is roughly 1,521 pounds, and the other one's 1,521 pounds, they're statically load rated to the same amount of weight. You know, from a numerical level, they're evenly matched. And I'm not saying that they'll perform exactly the same. There's obviously weight differences on each one, but just keep in mind, that's your only real solid way of comparing apples to apples. And I think it's valid to at least keep it in the major part of your consideration. If other people want to run flow formed wheels like I do, what's the best way to find Koenigs for your car? Yeah, I mean, so we have a dealer locator on our website. You can go to koenigwheels.com, uh, find the dealer locator. You can find a dealer near you if you want to 
find somebody online. Google works really well. You'd be surprised how well it works. Uh, there's a whole bunch of Koenig product available to you there. Uh, but you know, we put up a lot of informational pieces over on our YouTube channel, Koenig Wheels USA. Uh, and in addition to that, uh, you know, we constantly are making more content just as informational stuff. I don't want to be selly. I want to be out there. There's plenty of good wheel product. Um, and if it's not you choosing ours, just be informed about what you are choosing. And I think that that's the best way for any motorsport person or any car person alike. Awesome. Well, thanks a ton, Scott. And uh, go back to the wheel factory. We need more. So. <laughs> That's right. We're on it. Thanks a lot, Tom. Support brands that support grassroots motorsports. Get your chemical solutions from CRC Industries. Visit crcindustries.com to learn more.